Last time I looked at Epic Pinball Pack 2 and now we conclude with Pack 3. Interesting thing to note is that if you bought the CD version, you get 13 tables. Originally it was 12 tables via diskettes. How do the last 5 tables hold up? Well, let's just say things don't look good, and Cyborg Girl starts things off. This is also the first table with no real objective. Okay, that's not entirely true. What you have to do is... If I were to take a guess... To change Cyborg Girl's colors? Anyways, the layout does have a few unique features. For starters, you don't get multipliers by sending the ball through the three passages. Instead, they build up ice, and if you get the ball up the ice ramp, you get lots of points. Remember when I said you can change a cyborg girl's colors? Here's how. You have to shoot the ball into the CPU hog four times, then sink the ball into the tent's deck. Of course, that's easier said than done. I can't think of anything else, and cyborg girl unfortunately gets two and a half pinballs out of five. Next up is Pangea. The supercontinent from the Paleozoic era to the early Mesozoic era. The goal is to trigger events that end up with the demise of the dinosaurs. When I see events, they are very specific and have to be done in order. From Stampede to Extinction, completing each objective is easier said than done. Along the way, you'll get to collect dinosaur eggs. What do the eggs serve? As far as I know, I couldn't tell you. Pankia is a little bit better than Cyborg Girl and gets three pinballs out of five. Next up is Space Journey. And this is where things start going downhill. The objective is to explore the galaxy and visit each planet. Along the way, you'll get a chance to dive into the abyss, go into hyperspace, orbit around the space station, and visit the asteroid belt. But that's not why things are going downhill. It's because trying to complete the objectives can be a bit of a pain in the A double crooked ladder. Trying to get the ball to where you want it to go is a bit of a hassle. That's not to say the other tables were easy. What I'm getting at is the table went overboard with obstacles. While Space Journey isn't the worst table, it does rank up there and gets two pinballs out of five. Next up is Toy Factory, the most deceptive table of them all. Don't be fooled by the cutesy layout. Toy Factory is quite challenging, but on a positive note, it does make you work for what you want. I call this challenging for the right reason. The objective is to fill the toy shelf with toys and scrapping anything junky. How to complete the objectives is quite complicated. The secondary objective is to spell factory by hitting the lock in the upper left four times. Do this and you get the jackpot. Toy Factory also gets two pinballs out of five. Before I get to the last table, let me ask this. Did we really need a 13th table? The answer is actually no, we didn't and don't know why we did. The table I'm referring to is African Safari, the worst table of them all. I call this challenging for the wrong reason. For starters, the launch is like crash and burn, but with a sharper curve which makes losing the ball even easier. Next is completing the objectives, which is to go on an African safari. While on topic, triggering these events is difficult and completing them is even worse. Dare I go on? And the real offender? The huge gap at the bottom of the table, despite a peg being there. I forgot to mention that Deep Space, Toy Factory, and this table have pegs at the bottom to keep the ball in play. I could go on, but you get the idea. This table gets one pinball out of five, and the game as a whole gets three and a half pinballs out of five.